Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, yes, welcome back to another edition, another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. It's been a minute. When I was on the YouTube channel earlier on today, I was like, when was the last time we recorded anything? We ain't done bits in time. I think it's been like nine, eight days. You know, that that India tour, that India series, it was a lot. Multi-format series. Santoki and I said, you know what, let, let, let's go on a bit of a break after this India series. Man, them need to rest, you know. Um, but we're back. Well, kind of. We're kind of back and obviously Caribbean Premier League is going on at this moment in time. The group stage is slowly but surely coming to an end. It should end next week. And then you get into the eliminators, the final, et cetera, et cetera. First things first, you can see on the ticker tape below, if you're watching this on the visuals, uh, you can find the Caribbean Cricket Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Carib Cricket. If you'd like to support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, remember we have no sponsor. You lot are our sponsors. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash Carib Cricket and you can become a supporter, a patron, a contributor for as little as one or two of whatever your currency is. Rupees, dollars, East Caribbean dollars, pounds, whatever it might be. But <clears throat> as the title of this episode says... It's supposed to be a quick one as I smile, but I think it's actually supposed to be a quick one. I'm going to try one of those videos where you, I don't waffle on for ages. I just make the points and see what you lot say in the comments. We need to talk about Andre Russell. Is it time for a recall for Andre Russell? And before I break this one down, let me start off by just saying this. F your feelings. Did you hear what I said? Did, did those of you down the back and round the sides, did you hear what I said? F your feelings on this one. Even I have to F my feelings. Because before I decided to record this one, I said, yeah, but I've recorded videos on Andre Russell before. And for those of you who are new to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, for those of you who are new to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast channel, or perhaps don't know about some of our archive um. Uh, videos, audios, uh, visuals, etc. Type into YouTube, Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Andre Russell, and you'll see a video I recorded one year ago where where I was critical, where I where I took Andre to task and I said he needs to stop the foolishness. This was back when Andre was doing the usual kind of, ah, uh, boy, look at this, my emails are on. See what I mean, man? Let me lock this off. One sec, people. So this is when Andre was doing the usual when they'd be like, I'm available, I'm not available. Um, I said I was going to do international duty, then I'm going to play in some next T20 tournament, this, that, this, that. I can't even rem remember the ins and the outs of specifically what I said in that video. I'd need to go back and watch it. But I do remember that I was highly critical of Andre Russell um, at the time and said he needed to stop taking West Indies for patty shop and thinking he can come and go, come and go, etc., etc. That said, as much as I would have said that in that video, I have never at any point whilst being the, the, the co-host host of Caribbean Cricket Podcast channel, I have never at any point said, forget Andre Russell, full stop 100%. Because my mindset has always been the same. When you have someone who has Andre's, Andre Russell's skill set, you can't afford to just turn your nose up at it. Now let's let's get this straight, right? I don't we haven't seen Andre Russell since someone correct me. In fact, let me go, let me just go on my stats page right now and make sure I'm not talking foolishness. Foolishness. And bear in mind, people, I'm not none of this is about uh old Jai cricket. We're just talking about T20s, right? So bear with me. The last time we saw Andre Russell play for the West Indies was at the 2021 T20 World Cup, right? That was the one in uh, Dubai, UAE, or wherever it was. We got we only won one match, which was against Bangladesh, which actually, for those of you who remember that match, it was Andre Russell who bowled the death over that won us that match. 
I think he only had eight. Was it only eight to play with? And he bowled a death over that won us that match. So he played, he actually played a pivotal role in the one win we had in that T20 uh, World Cup two years ago. Now, at that time, Andre Russell was 33 years old and he had a bad World Cup. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to front. In that World Cup with the bat, Andre Russell had five innings at bat. He's, his top score was 18, not out, and he averaged six. So I'm not going to try and front and say, oh, Russell was amazing. No, he had a dreadful World Cup with the bat. With the ball, it wasn't much better. He took three wickets at 41 apiece. So I can totally understand how two years ago after the 2021 World Cup, Dre had a, had a bad World Cup. I can totally get how selectors after that may or may not have said, let's move on. I can also understand how Dre at the time would have said, these are my T20 commitments. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing. You lot select around that. Now, again, for those of you who've been following the story, there's clearly been some kind of falling out between um, Andre Russell and West Indies selectors over the last, what, year and a bit. He did. He famously or did that famous kind of interview, I can't remember if it was with an engine outlet, where he said he had been promised things and he felt that people had reneged on their promises. It's never truly ever been clear at a selector's press conference what the state of play is with Andre Russell. Desmond Haynes has never said categorically, we have closed the door on Andre Russell. So before anyone gets at me and says, no, nah, Mash, forget him, forget him. It has never categorically been said that the door is closed on Andre Russell. Andre Russell as recently as, what, I'm going to say three, four months ago said, I still want to play for the West Indies. Anyways, that was the 2021 World Cup. We fast forward to the 2022 T20 World Cup. Andre Russell was not selected. At the time of that World Cup, he would have been 34. He was not selected. And West Indies didn't even qualify for the main stage of the World Cup. Famously, they lost to Ireland, they lost to Scotland, and didn't even make it into the main stage of the 2022 World Cup. And the reason why it's important to state that fact is anybody who has immediately, from an emotional level, said, no, 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 there's no space for Andre Russell, bear in mind that the last T20 World Cup we went to, he wasn't there. And we did even worse than how the team performed in the preceding World Cup in 2021. We still have not seen Andre Russell play for the West Indies in well over two years. Now, why am I doing this video then? At the time of recording, we are, um, what, one week away from the Trimbago Knight Riders playing in one of the eliminated, elim oh, sorry, playing in one of the eliminator games in the final stages of CPL. Cool, that's not really my point. Let me talk to you about who's performed in CPL this year. Now, for those of you who have watched the preceding video I did on CPL and or the last few videos I've done for the channel, I said that going into CPL, West Indies had some crucial positions they they should be scouting for or they should be looking out for that are needed to improve the quality of the West Indies T20 side both both in terms of the first 11 and in terms of strength in depth one of those positions was a fast bowling enforcer someone who can bowl outside of the power play, bowl some enforcer overs, someone who can preferably bowl in the power play. And if they're any good, maybe they can bowl at the death. But the point is, when I say fast bowling, I mean they can bowl at 140 clicks. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to all draw your attention to the wicket-taking list thus far in CPL. After eight games played, not everyone's played eight games, but after eight games played for Andre Russell, these are his figures. Eight matches, 21 overs, 179 runs conceded, 11 wickets at 16 apiece, economy 8.45. Andre Russell has also bowled consistently over 140 clicks in this tournament. So, soak that one up. Let that one marinate in your head. Everyone in the Caribbean who is a proper statistical connoisseur, 
Anyone in the Caribbean who is a proper uh, analytical uh, purveyor of the West Indies T20 side knows that we need a fast bowling enforcer, a fast bowling power play bowler, a fast bowling death, bowl, death over bowler. So far in the side, we have one man who can do that, Alzari Joseph. And when, when I say fast bowling people, we're talking about 139 plus clicks consistently. No one else in the tournament has come close to emulating what Andre Russell has done, West Indian. The only person that comes into the conversation, and remember people, we're talking about fast bowling. We're not talking about medium fast. We're talking about fast bowling. The only person who comes close to Andre Russell is old Shane Thomas. Old Shane Thomas, seven matches at the time of recording. 21 overs, so the same as Andre Russell. 185 runs conceded, more than Andre Russell. Same number of overs. Eight wickets, three less than Andre Russell. Eight wickets at 23. Andre Russell has taken 11 wickets at 16. Economy, 8.60. Andre Russell has a better economy than him. Do the mass people. And by the way, there's no one else to call. Don't, don't get in the comments now and say, what about Matthew Ford? I'm talking about fast bowling. 139 clicks bowling. O'Shane Thomas is what everybody... O'Shane Thomas is the person that everyone believes should be the guy. If he can get fit, they believe that, oh, in time, he is the guy to partner Alzari Joseph. But if Andre Russell is outperforming all the young bucks, if he's outperforming them at 35 years of age and his knees are holding up, which they clearly are, because the man is consistently touching 140 clicks. The man's taking 11 wickets at 16. His economy's on point, 8.45. He looks like a fast bowling wicket taker. I'm not talking about Andre Russell, the all-rounder. That's a bonus. I'm talking about Andre Russell, the bowler. And if you're somebody who's been listening to Caribbean Cricket Podcast over the last three years, whatever it might be, you will have heard me say to Santoki on episodes before that I've always wondered why we pigeonhole Andre Russell as just, uh, sorry, why we pigeonhole, pigeonhole Andre Russell as an all-rounder when arguably he can make West Indies teams as a bowler and the batting is a bonus. Some of you are going to call old Dean Smith's name. Who's better, Andre Russell or Old Dean Smith? I'm not talking about potential. I'm talking about right now. If you had to chuck a man a death over and you said, right, go defend 10, who do you trust to defend that 10? Dre, Old Dean, or Old Shane? If you were to chuck a man a ball in the middle overs and say, we need to regain some control, who would you prefer to chuck it to? Dre? Old Dean or a shame. If you were to chuck a man to bowl up front, cause a bit of problems, who would you trust to do that? Dre, Old Dean or a shame. If you're wondering why I'm calling those three, it's because I'm talking about fast bowling. Forget what the either any of them can do with the bat. That's a bonus. We're talking about fast bowling. By the time the T20 World Cup comes to the Caribbean in June 2024, Andre Russell will be, he will have just turned 36. He will have just turned 36. If we're being consistent and we're all in agreement that CPL is our domestic tournament where we look at what our domestic uh, eligible players for West Indies selection are doing, then how can you look me in the eye and say Dre Russ doesn't come into consideration? How can Desmond Haynes look at the performances, Roland Butcher and Darren Sammy look at the performances and say, hmm, we don't need Dre Russ, you know. We've got better players than him. If we've got better players than Dre Russ, who can fill that new ball, enforce a death bowling from a fast bowler, who is it? 
My name is Mashal St. Patrick here at One Half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Get at me in the comments below. I know you lot are going to be emotional about this one. All I'm saying is this. If Dre keeps this form up after CPL and he goes to IPL and all them next hit and giggle tournaments and he's showing the same consistency with the bowling, how could we possibly turn around and go, we don't need him? We never have, and we do not have, sorry, the, the talent depth to look at a 35, 36-year-old Andre Russell and say, yeah, your time is done. I'm sure you'll disagree. I'm sure enough of you will get in your, in, get in your feelings about it. But like I said at the start, F your feelings. Base this on statistical analysis and what you're seeing on the pitch. Is there a place for Dre Russ? Yes or no? I'll be Marshall St. Patrick here at one half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Get at me in the comments below. Comment if you listen to this on the audios. Let me know what you feel. <laughs> Talk to you soon. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.